Hey there, space enthusiasts. Brace yourselves for some out-of-this-world updates on Astrobotics' cosmic journey. Sure, the Vulcan Centaur launch was a stellar success, but did you catch wind of the twists and turns in the Paragon saga? Despite Paragon not reaching lunar shores just yet, the Astrobotic team has pulled off some jaw-dropping feats, defying the odds and keeping the mission alive longer than anyone imagined. The Moon Rendezvous is no longer a far-fetched dream. Now let's dive into the nitty-gritty. The Vulcan Centaur blasted off like a champ, delivering its payload spot-on for the lunar jaunt. But hold on to your helmets. Things went sideways afterward. Peregrine, our lunar explorer, hit a hiccup with its propulsion system, a pesky fuel leak. This glitch played havoc with its alignment towards the sun. Picture this. Without solar panels basking in sunlight, Peregrine's battery was on the fast track to empty. To salvage the situation, Astrobotic had to push Paragon's RCC thrusters to the max, executing a daring maneuver to point those panels sunward before communication blackout. Now, here's the heart stopper. Many, myself included, feared Peregrine might not make it out of the blackout. With no guarantee it would keep facing the sun and the RCC thrusters in overdrive, the probe seemed to have only hours left assuming we could reconnect it all. Hold on to your telescopes, folks, because Astrobotic is giving us a cosmic roller coaster, and we're here for every twist and turn. Stay tuned for more updates on the angry astronaut, and naturally, the floodgates of criticism opened up, questioning the wisdom of entrusting private companies with our lunar ambitions. Comparisons were drawn to the venerable Voyager spacecraft, which has been navigating the cosmos for over four decades. Would Peregrine suffer a similar fate, folding within four days? However, such comparisons aren't entirely fair. One significant factor, which we'll delve into shortly, sets Peregrine apart. It's crucial to acknowledge that Peregrine has defied all expectations after the initial setback. Many believed the probe would succumb to its fuel leak within a couple of days. Yet, as of this moment, Peregrine not only endures, but is actively eyeing a rendezvous with the moon, reinstating the realm of possibility. For those of us who vividly recall NASA's animated depictions of Voyager's encounter with Saturn in the early 1980s, it feels like ancient history. The notion that Voyager still thrives in the vastness of deep space is almost inconceivable. These enduring feats prompt skepticism about the capability of private companies to undertake planetary or lunar missions. The prevailing sentiment questions whether they are truly up to the task. However, a pivotal distinction exists between the Voyager series and Peregrine, as well as many private spacecraft, nuclear power. Voyagers harness the heat generated by decaying radioactive isotopes, specifically plutonium isotopes, to generate electric power. Procuring plutonium isotopes is no small feat unless you happen to be the U.S. government. In essence, the ongoing saga of Peregrine challenges preconceived notions about private companies' spacefaring capabilities. While skepticism looms, Peregrine's resilience and the unique challenges it overcomes highlight the evolving landscape of space exploration, inviting us to reconsider who might truly be best suited for the next frontier. So, here's the scoop on solar power for spacecraft. It's the budget-friendly, trusty choice for private companies on a mission. But there's a catch. You've got to nail the solar panel alignment with the sun. Otherwise, you'll be in a real power pinch. Just ask Peregrine, which sadly found itself in a power pickle shortly after launch from Ula's brand new rocket. Now, fast forward to the aftermath of this cosmic hiccup. Brace yourself for update hash 6 on January 8th. We've got a propellant leak causing our spacecraft to tap into its thrusters superhero mode. They're working overtime to prevent a wild tumble into space chaos. If they keep it up, we might just keep this bird in a stable sun-pointing stance for about 40 more hours. That was four days ago. Time flies when you're navigating space drama. Mission objective. Inch Peregrine as close to lunar distance as possible before it loses its sun-spotting mojo and, inevitably, its juice. Surprise twist. Paragon makes it to lunar orbit, but alas, the moon wasn't ready for the rendezvous. Chaos? Absolutely. Peregrine defied expectations on January 9th, chugging along for a remarkable 32 hours, despite a pesky spacecraft-pointing hiccup. 
Uh oh, it starts tilting away from the sun, dimming its solar power vibes. No worries though. Quick thinking, on the fly algorithm update swoops into the rescue, and boom, batteries are back to full charge on January 9th. But here's the cosmic kicker that propellant leak crushes dreams of a soft lunar landing, according to the space maestros at Astrobotic. The universe may throw curveballs, but Peregrine? It's the little spacecraft that could, pushing the limits beyond anyone's wildest dreams. Hey folks, we've got some updates on our space adventure. So, the deal is, our spacecraft is still cruising through the cosmos, but our propellant supply is running low. The brainiacs on the team did some recalculations, and it looks like we've got about 40 hours left before we're all out of gas. That's less than two days, in case you're counting. Now, rewind to January 9th. That's when things started to get a bit tricky. Astrobotic, our space troubleshooters, noticed a hiccup with the propulsion system. Turns out there's a sneaky valve that didn't seal up properly, causing a helium frenzy and, well, popping our oxidizer tank like a cosmic balloon. The good news? Our friends at Astrobotic are on it, and they've got a theory about what went down. Apparently, this valve glitch happened during the spacecraft's startup, unleashing a helium party that ended with a burst tank. But wait, it's just a theory for now. The real detective work will happen after the mission, with a team of space detectives, aka industry experts, putting together a full analysis report. Quick shout out to Ula's Vulcan rocket. It launched our Peregrine like a champ. And the propulsion drama? Definitely not their fault. Thumbs up to Astrobotic for clarifying that. Oh, and Paragon, our trusty camera onboard Peregrine, sent us another snapshot on January 9th. Problem is, it's a bit of a cosmic mystery. Earth? Lens flare? Your guess is as good as ours. The camera, by the way, hangs out on the bottom of one of Peregrine's payload decks. In the heart of this captivating image, we find the DH shell moon box, cloaked in Emily, slightly left of center. Brimming with the hopes and dreams of Earth's populace, it houses countless messages. On the right of the moon box, near the photo's bottom center, lies the Astroscale's Bukhari Sweet Lunar Dream Time Capsule, marking Astrobotic's inaugural payload. Inside are messages from children worldwide, forging a celestial connection. Shift your gaze to the bottom center right, and you'll spot the Paragon's landing legs. One leg is partially concealed by the electrical interface, where it once intertwined with the launch vehicle. Amidst this, we receive glimpses from Peregrine, proving its operational prowess on the 10th. At that juncture, Peregrine had voyaged in space for 55 hours, reaching a distance of 192,000 miles from Earth, 80% of the way to lunar orbit. Though lunar proximity loomed, the moon was not yet in sight. Nevertheless, Peregrine adhered to its planned trajectory, executing a phasing loop around Earth. This intricate dance involves venturing out to lunar distance, circling back around Earth, and then embarking on the lunar rendezvous. This trajectory promises a moon meetup approximately 15 days post-launch. The intrigue deepens as we ponder Peregrine's fate. Despite propellant leaks, it valiantly remains operationally stable, defying predictions. Initially thought to run dry in 35 hours, Peregrine surprises us, outlasting expectations. The tireless efforts around the clock aim to stretch the spacecraft's life, transforming each moment into a triumph against the ticking clock. And wow, did they nail it. Picture this. On January 11th, Peregrine embarked on some serious scientific quests. It struck up conversations with over 10 different instruments, including the Irish Lunar Rover, the agency commander, and a special Mexicana, the first ever Mexican payload to journey into deep space. And that's not all. The M42 radiation detector from the German Aerospace Center joined the party. But here's the cool part. These instruments aren't just chilling in space. They're doing some serious science stuff. They're checking out radiation levels in interplanetary and cislunar space, which is a big deal for Artemisia's grand mission. The gang includes the Linear Agent Energy Transfer Spectrometer, the Near Infrared Volatile Spectrometer System, the Neutron Spectrometer System, the Peregrine Ion Trap Mass Spectrometer, 
and the navigation Doppler LiDAR system from NASA's Langley Research Center. Hold on, there's more. The Peregrine Ion Trap Mass Spectrometer, the Picari Sweat Lunar Dream Time Capsule from Astroscale, and the Optical Precision Autonomous Landing System from Astrobotic are also in on the action. Now, I know the navigation LiDAR and landing systems might seem like they're just there for show, but Astrobotic is no slouch. They're aiming for the moon, and while success isn't guaranteed, they might just pull off a landing or, worst case scenario, a spectacular moon crash. Fast forward to two days ago, and Astrobotic dropped the bomb. Peregrine still had a solid 48 hours of propellant left. That's a game changer a huge leap from where they thought they were just a short while ago. Astrobotics got the moon in their sights, and who knows, maybe they'll pull off the impossible. Stay tuned. So, picture this. Our spacecraft, Peregrine, has defied all expectations. It's been more than 48 hours, and guess what? It's not just operational, it's getting even better. The leak rate is slowing down more than anyone foresaw, and there's a chance it might slow down even more. However, predicting the exact changes in the propulsion system's rupture size is a bit tricky as the pressure drops. Fast forward to the 11th day. Peregrine has been cruising for three and a half days, a whopping 225,000 miles away from Earth, almost 94% of the way to lunar orbit. And that's not all. The latest update from Astrobotic just came in 11 hours ago, revealing that Peregrine is outperforming all expectations. It's a true space champ. Now, it's 238,000 miles from Earth, officially in lunar orbit. The moon might be absent for a rendezvous, but here's the exciting part. Peregrine's current trajectory hints at a potential moon meetup in just 15 days, roughly 10 days from now. The catch? Well, fuel estimates suggest they might run out around that 15-day mark. Yet, at this point, who knows what's possible? Hold on to your seats because on Thursday, January 18th, five days from now, at noon Eastern Time, Astrobotic is hosting a teleconference with NASA for some major mission updates. Get this, it's going to be streamed on NASA's channels, and a handful of lucky journalists, myself included, have scored an invite. Honored and excited is an understatement, as Peregrine gracefully holds its ground in a stable configuration, and with the eagerly anticipated teleconference just around the corner, brace yourselves for another update dropping soon. However, they're easing up on the update frequency, sensing that Peregrine might continue its stellar run until January 18th. Believe it or not, a lunar rendezvous might just be in the cards, and that's not wishful thinking on my part. Let's take a moment to applaud Astrobotic for pulling off the seemingly impossible with Peregrine, despite the significant damage it endured. The resilience on display here deserves some serious recognition. Now, what's on the horizon? Who knows what feats Astrobotic might achieve in the coming days? Other lunar-bound companies, pay attention. This little outfit from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, is schooling us all on crisis management. Major kudos. Before signing off, a quick plea. Hit that like button, subscribe for more updates, and consider throwing some support on Patreon for early access. Shout out to my Discord supporters who got the inside scoop earlier today. Until Peregrine's lunar journey unfolds, keep that space enthusiasm alive, folks.